Hey everyone, Cody here, and if you're watching this video, it means that we've reached 1,500 subscribers. And first off, I just want to say thank you again uh, for even watching my videos. But second, I just appreciate all of the support I've gotten over the last year. <clears throat> I think I gained over a thousand this year, which is pretty nice, uh, saying as how last year I only had a couple hundred. So it's not a huge, huge amount, but it is a lot of growth comparatively. So I'm, I'm very grateful. Now, as a reward, basically I said that once I reached 1,500 subscribers, I would do another large Holic style painting. And so here we are. The canvas is right here, right below this, the camera, and uh, it's going to be a 4x5 painting, so pretty large, and uh, we're going to paint it outside. But first, before we go outside to actually do the painting, and I will try to narrate this video, now that I have a microphone, it might be a little easier, I'm going to try to narrate the whole process as we go. Whereas before, I would just kind of talk to the camera in between, or I'd tell you what was going on beforehand, whatever. We're going to try to actually... Uh, I'm going to try to narrate the whole process as we go. Uh, lastly, uh, before we actually go outside and start painting, obviously I need to show you what we're going to be working with today as far as the tools and the paints that I'll be using to make this Jackson Pollock inspired painting. So let's head over to my table. I'll show you as a top down uh, what we're going to be using today and then we will get to the actual painting. Okay, so these are the colors we'll be working with. We've got kind of a dark purple here. We've got a turquoise, white, black, gold, silver, and whitish gray. So it's a really light gray. And it looks pretty cool because it's separated. So because it's been sitting for a while, it's separated. Now, what we're going to be doing, and I'm going to go ahead and set you guys up here. Uh, we're going to be doing the background. Now, I'm going to set you up because I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, my paints while we're sitting here. Uh, I'm going to explain what's going on with the colors. So uh, we're going to be using the this gray that I'm stirring now and the silver that's in the back. So it looks like we got a little fleck of something in there. Let's see if we can get that out. There we go. All right. So we're going to be using the silver and the whitish gray as the backgrounds. So what we'll do is we'll pour them on and we're gonna pour them right on the canvas and kind of uh, mix them around, probably with a rubber squeegee to give us a toned background. And then we will use the rest of the colors as the actual topical colors. And I, I don't feel like there's enough contrast, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and add this gray and we're gonna put that on the background as well. So we'll kind of do that. Uh, we'll do the background and then we'll come back in and we'll set up the paint to be used for the actual painting. And there we go. We got a nice little starburst of color. So I'm going to go ahead and move this white aside because we're going to come back to it. So we're going to go ahead and give this a good stir. I haven't actually used this one, so it's uh, a, little, a little thick. So we'll give it a nice mix. All right, now these ones are gonna be a little thicker because I'm not gonna dilute them. Uh, we're just gonna put them on the canvas and kind of fill the canvas with the colors. And then when we actually get to the colors for the painting, uh, those colors actually will be diluted. All right, so I think that's pretty good. Those are stirred, so I'm gonna throw some gloves on. And then we are going to head outside and do the base coat. So let me get these on right now. We've well, got to put these on. We're working with house paint or gloss enamel because it is super messy. Um, all right, real quick before I go any further, let me explain what paints I'm using. Uh, this is gloss enamel. This is uh, Dun Edwards. It's a local paint brand. Uh, this is gloss enamel. So essentially it says right there, high gloss. 
uh, alkyd. So this is gloss enamel, the type of paint that Pollock used in essence, right? It's not exactly the same, but in essence, it's the same. Um, this is just an eggshell paint, actually. So this is actually just regular house paint that I'll be using for the background. Reason is, is this quality is really good, but also I have the paint, so I kind of want to use it up. Um, and then here we've got metallic PBG silver base. So this is actually something I got at Home Depot. So you can actually get the metallic, uh, the gold and the silver at Home Depot, at least I can at mine. So those are what we're going to be using for the background. <clears throat> the rest of the paint for the actual painting, uh, again, the metallic is the PBG metallic, but the rest of these are all gloss enamel. So those are all from Dun Edwards. They're all high gloss, um, basically house paint. So, all right, now that we've got that established, let's go ahead and head outside. We'll set up the canvas and we will paint the base coat. Okay, so as you can see, I already have a small canvas down. The reason is, is because I'm painting on my driveway. My driveway, if you can't tell, is already ruined. So I tend to paint outside when I can. Now, it is super cloudy outside, so I'm really hoping that it doesn't rain. That would uh, kind of complicate things a little bit. But anyway, we're gonna go ahead and proceed. Um, I've got my canvas here. So here is the big boy. All right, so we're gonna open it up and lay it down. And so that little canvas that you saw on the ground is actually for uh, balancing it out, like leveling it a little bit. So it'll help it so that the paint doesn't just all run uh, one direction, like the band. <coughs> so go ahead and take that off. All right. The Michael's special, everyone. All right, now that we got that off, go ahead and lay this down. I might need, I think that's actually pretty good. So, now we've got it on there. Looks like it's off, off screen a little bit. So let me pull that. There we go. Now you guys can see the whole thing, perfect. So I'm gonna, just going to check it real quick and see if it's level. I've got a little bit of noise. So it's still a little high on this other side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of cardboard under there. So again, this is to even it out because the driveway is sloped. Um, so that when we paint, all the paint doesn't just run off. Okay. All right. So we've got our um, canvas ready. Now we can kind of move into actually getting some paint on there for the background and then letting that dry again, hoping and praying that it doesn't rain. So we're just going to put quite a bit of paint in one area. Um, so we're going to kind of fill this area here and then we'll put a little bit more on this side. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. If we need to add more, we can, but it's always easier to add more than it is to take it away. <laughs> kind of like cooking. All right, so now we'll go ahead and put our dark gray on, and we're gonna do a decent amount here. I'll go ahead and put some up here as well, maybe over here in the corner. It's almost 
almost like we're making the Pollock style painting already, right? But that isn't what I'm trying to do here, to be honest. Although we will pretty much be using sticks and some other things. All right, so this light gray is really light, lighter than I thought compared to the silver, which almost looks white. It's kind of, it's probably hard to see on the, uh, the camera here, but that's okay. So I'm actually going to do quite a bit here in this corner and then over here and over there. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and move this paint around and see if we have enough on the surface so that the whole thing is covered. <clears throat> so we're just going to pull these paints out. Okay, so this isn't giving me the look that I want. So we're going to switch it up. We're actually going to use a brush. So let's grab this brush. A lot of my brushes are ruined because this, uh, you can kind of see it. Uh, a lot of these brushes are ruined because the gloss enamel is, is just so thick and it likes to, uh, doesn't like to come out of stuff. A little fleck of something in there. All right. So we're going to go ahead and just kind of, I guess we're going to end up with a really dark gray background, which I guess is okay. So I kind of like this technique anyway of using the brush to make a background. Um, I just like the brush look that it, it creates, especially if you have more colors kind of overlapped in one area. Now, if I just wanted a solid background, I would just kind of paint over itself and, and allow the colors to mix. But I, I don't want a solid color. I want some kind of texture on the background. This is actually starting to kill my hand a little bit. <clears throat> so if I had used a little bit more paint, I probably could have got some more blend out of it. But that's how it goes. And we'll kind of touch up the edges here. And I think the whole thing is covered. So, not a bad background, actually. I, uh, <laughs> pretty happy, actually, with the background. If, uh, if I just sold this painting by itself would actually be pretty pretty nice so let me go ahead and i'm just going to show you guys before we start adding stuff to it what the background looks like hopefully i'm not covering the camera so it's got a lot of waves in it <clears throat> you can kind of see just the individual brush strokes here So 
yeah, again, not bad actually. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and head back to the table so we can set up our other colors for the actual painting. All right, so now that we're back in here, we're gonna get a couple of mixing sticks. Got that, that, and that. And we'll get two more. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna set up our colors to go on the actual canvas. So we're going to mix them and then we're going to put them in here and we're gonna dilute them. So our, the paint, normally when I do these, I leave the paint a little thick. Um, I do dilute it to get it to move, but a lot of times I don't let it be too runny. Um, I'm thinking of letting it be a little bit runnier today than normal when I do this Pollock style painting. The reason for that is you get more movement. So if you leave it thick like this, like say I don't dilute this at all, it's going to give me a lot of lines, but it won't give me a lot of splash. But if I do dilute it too much, then it becomes just drops instead of lines. So you kind of have to find a balance of how thick you want it to create the effects that you're trying to achieve. So let's talk about the tools that we'll be using today. Um, I'll probably be using paint sticks, but I've also got a couple of other ones. I've got this thick piece of wood that I pulled off of uh, a counter that my father-in-law had made that just deteriorated over time. So just a thick piece of wood to create some thicker lines. Um, I'm also going to try a baster. I've tried it before in the past and it didn't work out. It just kind of fell apart. This feels a little sturdier than the one I used before. It's going to ruin this baster, so my wife will probably be pissed because she doesn't know I'm going to use it. Um, but also we'll be using this, um, the, the painting sticks. I do have um, a stick that I can use because Pollock also used old paint brushes. So we could use an old paint brush. Um, like the back side of it, but I'm thinking of also using an actual paintbrush paintbrush. So I've got an old paintbrush that's pretty pretty stiff. The bristles are all kind of baked together So I might actually use that and then the back of this paintbrush So those are the tools we'll be using today to actually make the painting So right now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and stir these and yeah, my right arm is already killing me from from doing the brush work but we'll go ahead and give these a stir. I think that's pretty good on that one. All right. And then this one, I don't know if you can see it, but there's like, this one hasn't been used at all, so it's kind of separated. I actually don't think this is the color I thought it was. Primitive plum. Yeah, I thought this was a darker purple, but you know what? We're going to go ahead and use it. We've already got it open, and this one's actually a pretty, pretty thin one already. See, the thing is, is that these paints, even though, okay, so like these are both, I bought those stock, right? You can buy white and you can buy black stock. But um, oddly enough, the paints aren't the same thickness. So it's like the same amount and everything, the same type of paint. But like white is a super thick paint for some reason. I don't understand it, um, but it just, it's just super thick right out the gate. Um, but then like this color was really thin. So, you know, you don't have to use as much water on these thinner paints because they're already thinner. So I, I don't know what's up with that. Like I don't I don't know what the deal is with house paint that you know some paints are thicker than others. I know that when I went one time they told me that because of like the dye or the base that they have to use to make the paint, that's pretty much why. But I, I guess I don't I don't make paint so I don't know exactly how all that works. Okay. So we're gonna finish stirring our paints here. Yeah, the white is like super thick and I've even diluted it already, but it's just, it's like, I don't know, the, the paint is just literally thicker, so it makes it a little more, oh, it splashed on me. Um, just makes it more challenging. Okay, and lastly, we will do gold and then we will go ahead and put the paint into these cups and we will, uh, these, are, these cups are what we're gonna be actually painting from not the not the big gallons actually i think i have some mini cans let me see to be a little more maybe authentic we'll use some old paint cans 
Okay. So this way we can, you know, be a little more authentic maybe. <laughs> At least aesthetically it'll look that way. Alrighty. So we've got all of our paints mixed. Cool. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and pour. Dang it. Stupid label. We're going to pour some of these paints into these cans. And then we're going to dilute them. So... Can you guys see all of this? Cool. I'm going to move everything back a little bit. Just to make sure you guys can see it all. Okay. So we'll go ahead and pour that in there. And I don't know how much we'll actually need. So I'll probably go like a third of the can. And this label's coming off. But I have a feeling that the paint sticking to itself is probably going to keep it on there. All right, so we're going to set that aside, and then we'll fill this one. Okay, give that a mix. So we'll set these ones aside. We'll do, this one already was gold, so we'll fill that one with some gold. Again, I, I really like gold as a color, so... I use a decent amount of it. And then black and white, which we're going to need quite a bit of black and white because I generally do black and white as the base, kind of like the uh, the first layers. Oh, there's a big chunk in there. I guess part of the, uh, the top of the thing. There it is. Oh, it's a toothpick. Interesting. Not even sure. <laughs> Not even sure how that ended up in there. Unless it's just a piece of dried paint. No, no, it's definitely a toothpick. All right, and then we will go ahead and do black and fill that up about halfway. I'm sure we'll use all these ones. Now, Pollock, if you've never really studied any of his work, he had a lot of black and white in his uh, paintings, a lot of black and white strokes. So that's what we're going to do. Give me a second, I'm going to get a drink. All right, cool. So we're gonna go ahead and dilute these now. So we're gonna move these out of the way so that you can see the different paints. Cool, all right, so now, now we're just going to do, again, enough to make it uh, runny, but not too much where it's just gonna create dots and you can see this is kind of thick, right? It runs off and it's pretty it's pretty thinned out already. But we're going to add just a little bit more. If you've ever really looked at Pollock's work, you know, he has a lot of dots, like a little sp like splashes and stuff, which indicates that the the paint was really thin one, but also he really had to throw it to get it to splash in the ways that he did. So I feel like this is pretty good. That's pretty thin. You can see it's just running off pretty easily. So I think that this one is probably pretty good. All right, so now we'll move on to purple. You can see this one's already kind of thin, like I said. We're going to start adding a little bit of water, and that's probably plenty. We'll mix it up. And you can see now it's just kind of pouring off. Do a little bit. Give it a nice little stir. And that's pretty thin. I don't know if you can see it. But yeah. You can tell basically when you're doing the paint, you can tell how thin it is. One, when you're stirring it. So like this one, I can feel the resistance of the paint while I'm stirring it. But two, you can see how slow it's dripping off when I pull this up. Okay, so it's, it's moving, but it's going to move a lot more once I add some water to it. Now, obviously, if you're using oil-based paint, you would use thinner, not water. But the paints that I'm using are all uh, latex paints or water-based. <clears throat> all right, so... And really get that worked in. 
we'll move it off so it's thinner, but it's still not as thin as I want it to be. The thin, the, how thin it is is up to you, and it really comes down to just kind of messing with it over time to kind of figure out what it is that you're trying to do. Okay, so that's pretty good. I don't want, you know, water, but I do want it to move very easily. All right, so now you can, again, you can see the white is kind of, it's coming off in a steady stream, but we really want it to, to move. And the white is a little thicker than the black one, so I'm going to really kind of break it down to get it to move out. Now, actually here, I think I just added too much water. I think that that's actually going to splash quite a bit, but that's okay. We'll just use it anyway, because I honestly don't think that Pollock sat there and measured every one of his, uh, his colors. I think he just kind of knew what he was trying to accomplish and then, you know, diluted it to that. And we're not him, so we don't know exactly what he did. We can just do what we want because it's our painting. All right, uh, pretty good. I'll probably dilute it just a little bit more. Perfect. All right, friends. So now we've got our paints all mixed up, all kind of uh, ready to go. I think I'm gonna do a little bit more too because I didn't, I didn't really put a lot in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that and just a tad more water. Give those a nice little stir, and we're off to the races. All right, friends, so I'm going to go ahead and move the camera back over to the canvas, and we will get started with this painting. All right, friends, I've got my paint and my tools here, and I've got them off screen. Again, we're going to start with black and white because Pollock had the most black and white in his paintings, and also, just doing this myself, I I just really like the balance that having black and white does. So we're going to go ahead and start with the baster and kind of see how it does. <laughs> it makes like a suction noise, listen. That's pretty interesting. Like I said, I the last time I used it, it didn't really work. What well, seems to be kind of working, I guess. I don't really like the the design it's making, but I do. I I kind of do like that splash right there. So we're getting some decent movement. Um, I'm going to say that this probably isn't my favorite tool, so I'm going to set that aside. Um, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to move to using this big stick that I've got here. I need to find something to set those on. Give me a second. Okay, cool. All right, so we're going to try this big stick and see what kind of... Uh, results we get here. All right, so I'd like to explain something. You can see that there's lines and there's dots. The dots is because it's too thin, so when you pull it off, you can see that it's not even creating a string. So if it was thicker, it would create the strings that you see here more often. Um, so that is from the white being really thinned out. But that's okay. I still, I kind of like the consistency. It's going to create some vibrancy. And you can see that I can make the arc if I snap the paint. And that's what's giving us these lines. It's from snapping. If I go really fast, it just creates dots. But if I kind of go slow, 
slower, this is what's going to create the those wide, really line, large lines, right? So the slow movement is what gives you the lines, the slow continuous movement. The quick snaps is what gives you the dots. So for future reference, okay, well it's plenty of white. So we're gonna move on to black and we're gonna try this uh, hardened brush. We're gonna dip that in there. And I kind of like, kind of like uh, the way that it's going, actually. Now I can snap it and get some splashes too. Or I can kind of side throw it and get some arcs. That kind of uh, erratic Splash that it makes if you kind of snap it is kind of the more it's more what I like to see in these types of paintings so I, I like to do that <coughs> the snaps okay now here's the problem that we're running into before I even continue you may or may not be able to see it and I don't want to touch the camera because I've got paint all over my hands but the paints are starting to settle Okay, so because they're still wet, these paints are starting to kind of absorb into each other. So we can do one of two things. I could leave it and just stop where I'm at and let these layers dry because that will create the distinct layers. Um, if I keep going, then the colors will just continuously overlap themselves and they'll start to pool. Now. If it was warmer outside and it didn't look like it was going to rain, I'd probably let them dry and we would continue them. However, because I think that it's going to rain and this painting is going to take a long time to dry because it's not hot outside today, I'm going to continue. Okay, and I also want to—I want to be able to finish this painting for you guys on camera. So we're going to push through. It's going to unfortunately make those layers kind of bleed together. But the idea of the video is to show you the painting from scratch. Now, what I would recommend at this point if you were making one of these is to do one or two layers, let it dry so that it, it creates kind of a, a firm layer for you to continue working on. Unfortunately here, I can't do that because I can't, I have nowhere to put this painting in, in my house or my garage. So I, I don't have a safe place for me to store it while I'm waiting to, you know, continue. So we're going to have to push through. So we're going to move on to gold. Um, the only real tool that I have left to use is, uh, is the back of the paintbrush. But that's not going to yield this much because it's so thin. Um, we can use it to, if you want to get some tiny flecks, like I don't know if you can see the little tiny flecks, but yeah, it, you can use it to create really thin lines, but it's really no different than using the paint stick um, for the thicker lines, which is what I like to do anyway. So from here on out, I'm going to go ahead and just use the, uh, the, the stir sticks of the paint because honestly, that's kind of my favorite tool for making these paintings anyway. Because really, it gets it holds the paint. It's large enough that you can kind of control it, and you get a decent amount of paint with each kind of flick, right? And so we're gonna kind of throw the paint here, and that's going to make those erratic uh, 
lines. Make sure that the gold is evenly distributed. So we're gonna just kind of throw some gold, so a little bit of drops right around the edges here. I actually like the balance of, of this painting a lot, actually. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and throw in a little bit of accent um, with our turquoise and our plum. And I don't, I don't really want a whole lot of it. It's really just to kind of break it up. do our final color here the plum and same thing we're not going to do a whole lot <clears throat> it's just to kind of give it some contrast Okay, so essentially, now that all of that is on there, what I would normally end with is the black and white. And I'm going to go ahead and do that, but just know that because the painting, like the colors are starting to pull together, um, essentially what's going to happen is you're going to lose a lot of this, the distinct um, colors and layers because we didn't allow it to dry, and so it, there, those basically those colors are going to pull together. So if you make these paintings, like I said, I, I've talked about it in other videos, and you want those distinct layers, which you probably will, uh, go ahead and let it dry, if possible. You know, do it somewhere where. That's not going to be an issue. Or if it was, you know, summer and this painting was going to dry in, you know, a few minutes, then it wouldn't be an issue. Looks like my neighbor's driving by. tell that the colors are just kind of getting absorbed. I'll show you once we're done, which I'm actually done, <clears throat> that because they weren't dry, they're starting to 
absorb into one another. It's a lot easier during the summer when those colors are drying in minutes. <laughs> but overall we're done. So let's go ahead and take a look and we'll talk about it. So this is the final piece. It's, uh, that's the whole thing. So a lot of different uh, kind of workings here. All right, so ultimately I think the, the colors were fine. The background was fine. Everything was good about the painting, except for the fact that the layers weren't able to dry. So it's really unfortunate that I had to do it today um, just because you guys aren't going to be able to see those distinct layers, unfortunately. However, I wanted to get this video done for you guys. And I didn't know when I'd have a chance to be able to. So, you know, that's it. But you guys did get to see the techniques and stuff. Um, and kind of the tools. So hopefully when we're able to do the next one, you know, maybe it'll be a little warmer. And we can allow those layers to dry. But uh, that's it, guys. That is the whole painting. I hope you enjoyed the video. At least for learning purposes. And uh, that's pretty much it, guys. I appreciate you, and I hope that you have an awesome rest of your day. You take care. God bless. See you guys in the next one.